Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show where the aim of the game is to find the most obscure answer possible. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Hi, Alexander. My name's Ken. This is my wife, Gail, and we're from Warrington in Cheshire. And couple number two. Hello, my name is Sandra. This is Erica. I'm the mother, my daughter, and we're both from Newcastle. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Susie. This is my friend Joe, and we're from Bristol. And finally, couple number four. Hi, my name's John. This is my friend Ollie, and we're from Cardiff. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks very much, all of you. We'll find out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's a hard-boiled knowledge gumshoe, beating the streets of facts every night with nothing but a fedora, a laptop and a quizzical look. And he always gets the dame. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hi, everybody. Hiya. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Oh, that last show, one of my favourite shows ever, I think. It had a bit of everything in it, didn't it? Yeah. yeah we got a lot of people on today's show returning from it as well. We got um, Ken and Gail. We started out with them. Ken slightly mis misunderstood the question. Yeah. And they got knocked out because of it, which is a real shame, but you know, these things happen. Then the second round, we had John told us that Great Expectations was by Jane Austen. Yes. Uh, which, which it's not, apparently. It's by Charles Dickens. <laughs> uh, who knew that? And yet still managed to get through, still managed to beat Susie and Joe. Uh, so I can't, can't, still can't work out how that happened, but it did happen. Uh, and they got through the head-to-head -head and played Paul and Ray. And Paul and Ray were amazing, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. They were terrific. I think 2-0 in the head-to-head, -head, guys, wasn't it? And then uh, they went on, won the jackpot, got two point answers in the jackpot. Lovely guys as well. Took the money home. But we've got three of those returning pairs today. Uh, so I think it's going to be terrific fun, isn't it? We've got a great show ahead of us. Indeed. Well, thanks very much indeed, Richard. Now, we've asked every question on Pointless to 100 people before the show. As ever, the aim of the game is to try and find a pointless answer, that being an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we'll add 250 quid to the jackpot. Now, Paul and Ray, as you'll have gathered, won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off back at £1,000. So, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. OK, now, the pair with the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, but do remember there is to be no conferring during the round. OK, our first category today is public schoolboys. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... ..famous Etonians. Famous Etonians. Richard. Ah, oh, you know, actually, for once in this show, that's actually a typo. That should say famous Estonians. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I wish. Uh, we'll go with Etonians instead, shall we? On each pass, we're going to give you seven clues to famous people who attended uh, Eton School. We're going to give you their initials as well. Just have to give us the most obscure of those answers, please. It's going to be 14 and all to have a go at it home. Very, very best of luck. Thanks very much indeed. So we are looking for the famous Etonians described by these clues. The original presenter of University Challenge on UK television, BG. Art dealer and owner of the White Cube Gallery, JJ. He became UK Prime Minister in 2010, DC. He presented I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue for over 35 years, HL. The author who created James Bond, IF. Plays Brody in the US TV series Homeland, DL. And author of the 1945 book Animal Farm, GO. I'll read those all one last time. Original presenter of University Challenge on UK TV, BG. Art dealer and owner of the White Cube Gallery, JJ. He became UK Prime Minister in 2010, DC. He presented I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue for over 35 years, HL. Author who created James Bond, IF. Plays Brody in the US TV series Homeland, DL. Author of the 1945 book Animal Farm, G.O. There we are. Now, Ken and Gail, you all drew lots before the show, and today you are going to go first. Gail, I see that you've elected to go first this time. I wonder why that might be. What happened last time? Well, I think Ken misunderstood the question. D D you weren't listening, Ken. That's Your my problem. I don't listen. I'm Ken. always telling him, Alexander, he doesn't no. listen. Yeah. <laughs> Um, OK, Gail, there is your board. Uh, pick the lowest scoring answer you can. Well, I think I'm going to go for a punt on this one because I think I may know the art dealer and owner of the White Cube Gallery. Not personally, but I think it might be Jasper Johns. Jasper Johns, says Gail. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said Jasper Johns. No, no, no Gail, I'm 
I'm again. really sorry. <laughs> oh. oh, listen, I would be very surprised if that is the last 100 points scored in this round. <laughs> but uh, not Jasper Johns. Anyway, it scored you the maximum of 100 points, an incorrect answer. Sorry, Gail. I'm so sorry, Gail. I'm so sorry. That's two shows in a row now. Yeah, it's, uh, he's an, an American uh, artist, Jasper Johns, but um, not a gallerist or owner of the White Cube. A gallerist? <laughs> is that what they're called? Yeah. Someone who owns a gallery is a gallerist. A gallerist? Thank you very much. I'm going to go and look that up as soon as this show is over. Gallerist. Um, thanks, Richard. Uh, Sandra. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, from Newcastle. I am. But not originally from Newcastle. Uh, this no. is my, my well-tuned ear, picking this up. <laughs> A very well-tuned ear. No, I'm originally from Canada. Right. How long have you lived in Newcastle for? Ooh, since 1981. But I came over to Britain in early 1970s. And, uh, and what do you do? I'm retired at the moment. What did you do? What did I do? I was head of e-learning at a large FE college in the northeast. Right, you are. Now then, Sandra, yes. what about these Old Etonians? Yes. Um, I think I'll go for the first one, uh, University Challenge presenter, and say Bamber Gascoigne. Bamber Gascoigne, it says Sandra. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said Bamber Gascoigne. Is right. Twenty-nine, not bad at all, Sandra. <laughs> yeah, he presented University Challenge for 25 years, Bamba Gascoigne. Thanks very much. Uh, Joe, welcome back. Thanks. Now, round two last time. Yes. Uh, yes, and you joined the 200 Club. We did. We did. Yes. We're proud of that. <laughs> yes, good. No, well done, you. And uh, now, Joe, remind us what you do. I'm a training consultant for a, a software company. And what do you get up to when you're not doing that, Joe? I watch a lot of football. A bit of a fanatic. Um, there we are. So, Joe, what are you going to go for? I was going to go for the bottom one, but I'm not completely confident in my answer, so I'm going to play it completely safe and go for he became UK Prime Minister in 2010, David Cameron. OK, completely safe. Com OK. I think it's the safest one on the board, yeah. I, I, th I wouldn't argue with that. Uh, <laughs> let's see how many people said David Cameron for that. It's right. Wow. 1969. 69. 69 of our 100 people. Yeah, it's interesting that, isn't it? Yeah. The 19th British Prime Minister to have gone to Eton. Ollie, welcome back to Point. So, head to head, last round. Yes, good show. Head to head, yeah, good show, despite yeah. some, uh, some aberrations along the way. We did our best. You did your best. No arguing through. with that. Uh, now, Ollie, what do you do? I'm a marketing consultant. That's right. Yes. And in your spare time? Uh, still playing rugby. Uh, well, you thing. haven't given up since the last show. No, I'm <laughs> still, still going. Still That's going strong. Uh, that is it. I don't do a lot more, to be honest. But I might take up something new, if anyone's got any suggestions. <laughs> OK. Um, Ollie, there we are. You're the last person to have this board. Yes. Do you want to talk us through it at all? <laughs> well, the one I knew, believe it or not, is gone. <laughs> But I, I've, 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 I'm going to go, author who created James Bond. I'm saying Ian. Don't know what his second name is. But I'm going to punt Francis. Okay, Ian Francis says Ollie. Okay, Ian Francis says Ollie. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said Ian Francis. Oh. Okay, bad luck. I'm afraid an incorrect answer scores you the maximum of 100 oh. points. Sorry, Ollie. Carrying on as, uh, as you left off last time, though, it's very impressive. And the creator of James Bond is, of course, Ian Fleming. Would have scored you 81 points. Oh, so, uh, a lot of people knew that. Joe, if you'd gone for the bottom one, what, do you, what would you have gone for? I've got George Osborne in my head and Gary Oldfield. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll, you have a lot of sympathy if you've got George Osborne in your head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's George Orwell is the answer to that one. Well, it scored you 67 points. Uh, please, Brody in Homeland. Damien Lewis. Damien Lewis, yes. It scored you 30. Presented, I'm sorry, I haven't a clue. Humphrey Littleton. Humphrey Littleton, which would have scored you three points. Would have been a very good answer. And the best answer was a pointless answer, Gail. You'll be devastated to hear. J. And Joplin. it is Jay Joplin. Jay yeah. Joplin. Jay Joplin. Yes. Very well done if you said that at home.
Thanks very much. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. The best score of that pass was yours, Sandra. Very well done. 29 points to you. Up to 69, where we find Joe and Susie. Gail, phew, you've been joined up at the top there. Gail and Ken and Ollie and John jockeying it out on 100. So it's going to be between you, Ken, and you, John, in the next pass to see who stays and who leaves at the end of the round. Best of luck to both of you. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more clues up on the board, and here they go. We have got the British explorer, who in 2004 climbed Everest at age 65, RF. He has won three Olympic golds alongside Steve Redgrave, MP, was elected mayor of London in 2008, BJ, represented Team GB at the 2012 Olympics in the eventing competition, WFP, Goon, who starred in the BBC comedy It's a Square World, MB, along with Blunt, Philby and McLean, a member of the Cambridge Spy Ring, GB, plays the Prince Regent in Blackadder the Third HL. I'll read those all one last time. British explorer who in 2004 climbed Everest, stage 65, RF. He has won three Olympic golds alongside Steve Redgrave, MP, was elected Mayor of London in 2008, BJ, represented Team GB at the 2012 Olympics in the eventing competition, WFP, Goon, who starred in the BBC comedy It's a Square World, MB, along with Blunt, Philby and McLean, was a member of the Cambridge Spy Ring, GB, and plays the Prince Regent in Black Adder the Third HL. Now, remember, we are looking for the famous Etonians described by these clues. And John, obviously, we're going to try and find you the, the lowest scoring answer there. So, yes, before you start, John, remind us what it is you do. I, for my sins, I'm, an, I'm a lettings agent in the fine city of Cardiff. What sins are those, John? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's quite frowned upon, isn't it, the, 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 I, the I industry? Don't think it is. I don't think it is. I, we're there, honest. There I work for a family company, so uh, we're, we're very honest. You look very happy with this board. I've, I've got three of, that I know on there. But I think, as soon as it's our last show, I'm, if it's wrong, I'll go out on a bang. I think <laughs> the fourth one down, represented Team GB at the 2012 Olympics, is William Fox Pitt. William Fox Pitt, says John. William Fox Pitt. Let's see if it's right. There's no red line for you as you are joint high scorers. But let's see how many people said William Fox Pitt. Eight. <laughs> that, John, might be a game-changing answer. Very well done indeed. 108 is your total. Well played, John. Terrific answer. Yeah, he's a silver medalist at the uh, Olympics. Also been world number one. First Britain to be world number one in eventing. Thanks very much indeed. Now, Susie. Hello. Susie, hello. Remind us what you do, Susie. I'm a financial advisor. A financial mm. advisor. <laughs> yes. And uh, what do you like doing? I mean, I'm sure I bet you like financial advising. Oh, I do love it. Uh, um, but <laughs> when you're not financial advising. Um, I do like karaoke and a bit of singing and... Do you just... take your karaoke very seriously? I do. I, I mean, the local pub that I go to mm -hmm. has a regular karaoke night, so I try and attend that as often as I can. But I'd quite like to get into more the open mic nights, like the serious side of it, and do that side of the singing. The serious side of karaoke? Yeah. <laughs> well, sort of. Well, people don't laugh at you and they encourage yeah, you. Yeah, OK. Know. Now, listen, Susie, you're on 69. High scores at the moment, John and Ollie, 108. 38 or less. Mm -hmm gets you into the next round? Um, the board's not too bad. I would have preferred Joe's, but there are a couple that I do know. So I think I'll go for... He's won three Olympic golds alongside Steve Redgrave and, say, Matthew Pinsent. Matthew Pinsent, says Susie. Matthew Pinsent, there's your red line. If you get below that, you're in round two. Let's see how many of our 100 said Matthew Pinsent. Forty-two. John and Ollie, you're in round two. Susie and Joe, for the moment, you are our high scorers on 111. Yeah, good answer, though. Yeah, four gold medals for Matthew Pinsent. He started rowing at 13 when he was at school. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Erica, there you are on 29. Mm. Great performance from Sandra in the first round. Um, Erica, what do you do? Um, I work for the Alzheimer's Society, so it's a charity that helps people with dementia in the research team. And, and where do you do that? Uh, here in London. In London? Yeah, yeah. Right, so you, you've moved down from Newcastle. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been in London? Uh, about eight years. Eight years. Yeah. So when people say, where are you from, what's your, what do you tend to answer? From Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah. 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 Um, you're on 29 at the moment. Yeah. The high score is now Susie and Joe on 111. So 81 or less gets you through. Okay. 
So, um, I'm kind of, well, I mean, I'm definitely sure about one, but I'm not going to say that one. And then there's two that I'm kind of sure about, but I think I'll go with the bottom one, which is, um, plays the Prince Regent in Blackadder the Third, um, and go with Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie, says Erica. Hugh Laurie. There's your red line. If you get below that red line, you are through to the next round. Let's see if Hugh Laurie's right. Let's see how many people said it. Very well done. 52. <laughs> Takes your total up to 81. Well played, Erica. Uh, another rower, Hugh Laurie, actually rode in the boat race yeah. as well. He did, yeah. And he played, famously played Bertie Wooster, who also went to Eton. <laughs> Only fictionally, but he did. <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. Now, Ken, we now have a meaningful contest on our hands. You have to score 10 or less. Uh, Ken, what do you like to get up to? Oh, in the summer, I play bowls, crown green bowls. Um, I do some uh, Celtic knot work. Get out of town, I Ken. Do. Celtic knot work. Yes. Uh, Ken, there are one, two, three, four blank spaces there. Do you think you can fill one in that will score you ten or less, Ken? Hopefully, yes. Uh, I'll go for the goon who starred in the BBC comedy. It's a square world. That's Michael Benteen. Michael Benteen, says Ken. Michael Benteen. Now, this is exciting. There's your red line. If you can get below that red line with Michael Benteen, you go through to round two for the first time. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many people said Michael Benteen. Oh, 23, Ken. 23 takes your total up to 123. I'm so sorry. Sorry, Ken. Yeah, another old attorney, Michael Benteen. His mum paid his uh, school fees through her bridge winnings. <laughs> That's good. Nice, isn't it? Let's fill in the rest of this board. There is an answer up there that would have seen you through to the next round. The Cambridge Spy. Do you know the Cambridge Spy? Guy Burgess. Guy Burgess would have scored you three points. Um, the British Explorer was Ranulph Fiennes. He would have scored you 24. Now, do you think Boris Johnson got more points than David Cameron? Probably did, yes. He did indeed, yeah. He got 81 points. Cameron, I like that. Certainly will. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, so, at the end of that first round, I'm afraid our high score is on 123, are Ken and Gail. We have to say goodbye to you. Okay. It's round one again. Never mind. But listen, hey, Ken, it wasn't your fault this time. No. 50-50, ah. uh, <laughs> like everything else. Oh, uh, but Gail, you know what? That was good. That was a good punt, though. I mean, it's nice to take a punt. But anyway, it's been great having you on both shows. Thank you so much for being Ken and Gail. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. So three pairs remain. Obviously, at the end of this round, we will have to dispatch another pair in time for our head-to-head -head round. I wonder who that's going to be. Our category for round two is the UK oh. charts. Oh. <laughs> the UK charts. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many artists who've had a UK best-selling single of the year as they could. Artists who've had a UK best-selling single of the year. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for the names of any artists who've had the best-selling single of the year in the UK any year from 1952 all the way through to 2011, please. Thanks very much, Richard. Now then, Erica. Yeah, I can only think of one, and I just can't get it out of my head. So, um... Yeah, I'll go with uh, Brian Adams. Brian Adams, <laughs> says Erica. <laughs> Brian Adams, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Brian Adams. It's right. <laughs> 15. <laughs> Good start to the round, Erica. Very well done. 15 for Brian Adams. Well played, Erica. Sold over 8 million copies worldwide. Number one for 16 weeks. Thanks very much. Now, Susie. I'm going to have to play safe and hope that Joe has something good up his sleeve, so I will say wet, wet, wet. Wet, 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 says Susie. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. I think that's a good answer. It's right. Well, 15 is our only score so far. You pass that. Eight. Very well done indeed, Susie. Eight for wet, wet, wet. Well played, Susie. Yeah, the 10th biggest-selling single in the UK of all time. Love is all around. 
Uh, thanks very much indeed. Now, John. Hello. Yes, John. Singles. Best-selling singles of the year in the UK. The only one I can think that I, I know was a, was a big seller, top seller, was Rihanna's Umbrella. So I'm going to say Rihanna. Rihanna. OK, let's see if Rihanna's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said Rihanna. Six. It's all going in the right direction, John. Very well done indeed. Six for Rihanna. Well done, John. It wasn't Umbrella, though. It was, uh, it was her single with Eminem, Love the Way You Lie. Ooh. That was her biggest selling single in uh, 2010, so we won't accept Eminem uh, either now, if that's all right. But, yeah, Eminem featuring Rihanna. Thanks very much. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores as they stand. John, very well done. The lowest score halfway through the round. Then uh, up to eight, where we find Susie and Joe, and then up to 15, Erica and Sandra. So, yes, Sandra, you are out in front there. But uh, a nice low score from you. We'll see you through to the head-to-head. -head. Best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second place please step up to the podium? OK, now, Ollie, remember, we're looking for any artist or band who has had a UK best-selling single of the year. You're on six. Mm. The high score is, as I say, Sandra and Erica on 15. So if you can score eight or less, you won't be the high scorers. Right. I know this guy did well, so I'm going to go for it. Gareth Gates. So, Ollie is saying, Gareth Gates, there's your red line, Ollie. If you get below that, you're in the head to head. Oh, oh <laughs> Gareth Gates? <laughs> Bad luck, Ollie. That's an incorrect answer, scores you the maximum of 100 points. Uh, yeah, uh, he's had a few number ones over the years, Gareth Gates, but uh, he hasn't been top of that chart, I'm afraid. Thanks, Richard. Joe, yes, you need to score 97 or less. OK. Um, I can think of quite a few. I might just play it safe, to be honest. I'm going to go with Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. Queen, says Joe. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Just have to get below that red line, and you are in the head-to-head. -head. No. Oh, no! <laughs> Ollie and John <laughs> cannot <laughs> believe it. Um, Joe and Susie... Ditto, cannot believe it. I'm afraid an incorrect answer with Queen scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 108. Bad luck. I would have said Bohemian Rhapsody had been a best-selling single of the year, either one of the two times it was a big hit, but not, unfortunately. Very sorry. Uh, thanks, Richard. Now, Sandra, a big moment here. I am out of my league. Oh, could be I... a lifeline for Joe and Susie, indeed, Ollie and John. Indeed. I'm now. going to go for Tom Jones. Tom Jones. See, I would have thought that's a great answer. Possibly. Let's see if Tom Jones is right. Let's see how many people said it, if it is. There's your red line. He's right! Very well done indeed, Sandra. You are through. That's a great answer. One! And the best score of the whole round. Very well done, Sandra. It takes your total up to 16. You are in the head-to-head. -head. Oh, very well played, Sandra. Yeah, the best-selling single in 1966 was The Green, Green Grass of Home by Tom Jones. But let's take a look at some of the pointless answers. There's plenty of them up there. You could have had Brotherhood of Man, Save Your Kisses for Me, Culture Club, Karma Chameleon, Dexys Midnight Runners with Come and Eileen would have been a great answer. Engelbert Humperdinck, Release Me, Lady Gaga, Poker Face, Rick Astley, uh, Never Gonna Give You Up would have been a pointless answer. Black Eyed Peas, Where Is the Love, Human League, Don't You Want Me, The Righteous Brothers, Unchained Melody. Uh, Gareth Gates wasn't the biggest seller. He didn't win <laughs> Pop Idol that year. It was won by Will Young. And Will Young would have been a, uh, would have been a correct answer. Would have scored you one point, though. There's a few other pointless answers out there. You could have had uh, Shaggy. You could have had Doris Day. You could have had The Communard. Niles Barkley would have been a pointless answer. Well done if you said that. You could have had Mud, Black Box, Boney M would have been a pointless answer. Bob the Builder, a pointless <laughs> answer as well. What year was that? Bob the Builder? Yeah. That was, like, kind of uh, 2000, yeah. something like that. Bob the Builder, Can We Fix It? Christmas I mean, number one. A lot of the Christmas number ones are I the... See. Uh, uh, the big sellers also could have had Tony Christie featuring Peter Kay. Is this the way to Amarillo? Thanks very much. Uh, so, at the end of our second round, I'm afraid the pair leaving us with their high score of 108, it's Joe and Susie. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> dear, oh dear, we're so close there. We've been robbed again. So <laughs> close. And Ollie, <laughs> Ollie and John, Ian, Fla Ian Francis, <laughs> are going through. <laughs> 
to the head-to-head. -head. Uh, Joe and Susie, I'm really sorry. It's been lovely having you on both shows, but this is where we have to say goodbye. Thanks so much for playing. Joe and Susie. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Erica and Sandra, John and Ollie. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,000. Now, we have to decide who's going to go through to the final and play for that money, and to do that, you're now going to go head-to-head. -head. The difference is you're now allowed to confer. You can chat before you give your answers, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. So, best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. OK, here comes your first question, and it concerns Pride and Prejudice actors. Pride and Prejudice actors. We're going to show you five pictures now of actors taking part in productions of Pride and Prejudice. You just need to name the most obscure of these, please. Good luck. Thanks very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our five Pride and Prejudice actors, and here they are. We've got A... B... C... D and E. There we are, five actors who've taken part in Pride and Prejudice. Now, Erica and Sandra, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you will go first. We would like to go for E, Anna Chancellor. Anna Chancellor, say Erica and Sandra for E, Anna Chancellor. John and Ollie, talk us through the board. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice board, though. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go D, and it, it is a pun. I think we got his second name, Donald Sutherland. You're going to say D, Donald Sutherland. So we have E, Anna Chancellor, D, Donald Sutherland. Erica and Sandra said Anna Chancellor. Let's see if that's right and let's see how many people said it. If it is, Anna Chancellor. <laughs> Very well done indeed. Five for Anna Chancellor. Good answer. John and Ollie have said Donald Sutherland. A bit of a punt, but Donald Sutherland, you've said for D. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Donald Sutherland. Is right. 45. <laughs> Not a bad answer, John and Ollie, but uh, Erica and Sandra, you win that one. After one question, you're up 1-0. Yeah, well played, Erica and Sandra. Let's fill in the rest of this board. A is Kerry Mulligan. She would have scored you ten points there. B is Amelia Fox. She would have scored you 20. And there's a pointless up there. That is Tallulah Riley. Very well done if you said that pointless answer. Thanks very much. OK, here comes your second question. John and Ollie, you get to answer this one first, but you have to win it to stay in the game. Best of luck. It concerns... Denmark. <laughs> Denmark. Richard. Yeah, simply five clues now to facts about Denmark. Can you give us the most obscure answer to these? Thanks very much. Let's reveal our five clues, and here they come. We have got the island that is Denmark's largest dependent territory, the name of its capital city, the main unit of currency, the first name of the Queen who celebrated 40 years on the throne in 2012, and the Orizond Bridge connects Denmark to this other country. I'll read those one last time. The island that is Denmark's largest dependent territory, the name of its capital city, the main unit of currency, the first name of the Queen who celebrated 40 years on the throne in 2012, and the Orissant Bridge connects Denmark to this other country. There we are, John and Ollie. Five clues to five facts about Denmark. OK. We think that... The Orison Bridge connects Denmark to Sweden. Denmark to Sweden, say John and Ollie. Denmark to Sweden. OK, Erica and Sandra, the board is all yours. Yeah. OK, um, we're kind of sure about the top one, but not completely, so we'll go with the third one, which is the unit of currency, which is Krona. Krona, yeah. say Erica and Sandra. OK, so the order they were given, John and Ollie have said the Orissant Bridge connects Denmark to Sweden. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said that. 
It's right. There we are, 31. 31. So, Erica and Sandra, that is what you have to beat with your answer. The krona, the main unit of currency. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said krona. It's right. If this goes below 31, then you go... 47. Well done, John and Ollie. You're back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. Great answer, John and Ollie. Well played. Yeah, there was a... a... TV series called The Bridge, which was based on a murder on the Orison Bridge, and the, the two different countries having to investigate it together. Um, now, the island that is the largest dependent territory, what would you have gone for for that? Greenland. Greenland is the correct answer. Would have seen you in the final as well, because it would have scored you nine points. Oh. <laughs> the name of its capital city, I think everyone knew, is Copenhagen. Big scorer, though. Would have scored you 66. And the first name of the Queen would have scored you ten points if you'd said uh, Margrethe. Margrethe II. Thank you very much. So, here comes your third question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for the jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. It concerns... Chemical formulae. <laughs> chemical formulae. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you five everyday names of things alongside their chemical formulae. You just need to tell us what the things are, please. We're going to give you alternate letters. Just got to fill in the gaps. OK, thanks very much. Let's reveal our five chemical formulae, and here they are. B blank, T blank, M blank, N blank, C6, H8, O6, L blank, M blank, S blank, O blank, E, C, A, C, O3, A blank, M blank, N blank, A, NH3, Q blank, A blank, T blank, S, I, O2, and L blank, U blank, H blank, N blank, G blank, S, N, 2, O. I'll read those again without the blanks. V, T, M, N, C6, H8, O6, L, M, S, O, E, C, A, C, O3, a M N A N H three Q A T S I O two and L U H N G S N twenty. There we are. Five chemical formula and their common names. Erica and Sandra, you will go first this time. Okay. We will go for the fourth one down and say quartz. Quartz. Quartz, say Erica and Sandra. Now, John and Ollie, the rest are all yours. We think we know two. Yeah. Um, what do you want? Which one to do? I, I, I don't know which one to go for. I reckon. I reckon. You choose, mate. The uh, bottom one's got to be. Yeah. Go for it. We think the bottom one, N20, is laughing gas. OK, you're going to go for laughing gas. We have quartz and we have laughing gas. Now, Erica and Sandra, you have gone for quartz. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said quartz. It's right. 51 for quartz. 51. Now, John and Ollie have gone for laughing gas at the bottom there, N2O. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said laughing gas. It's right. 47. <laughs> John and Ollie, very well done indeed. After three questions, you are through to the final 2 1. <laughs> very well done. You come through this head to head really, really well. The nitrous oxide, of course, laughing gas. Um, there's a couple of other answers that would have seen you through to the final. Um, do you know the second one? It's limestone. Limestone, and that would have scored you 43. The biggest scorer up there is the third one, which is ammonia. That would have scored 82. Now, the best answer is the top one. It's vitamin, obviously, but vitamin what? What would you go for? I'd have gone for C. What would you have gone for? E. B. E. A. C. <laughs> it's vitamin C. <laughs> and would have scored you 27 points. Well done if you said that at home. Thanks very much indeed. So, the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, it's Erica and Sandra. Well, very much against the grain of play. You've played so consistently well throughout the show, and then you've come up, you've come up against the brain boxes. <laughs> um, and they have... They've seen you off, I'm afraid to they say. Have. There's good news for us, though. It means we get to see you again next time. Otherwise, you'd only have been on for one time, and that, would have been, that wouldn't have been long enough. But uh, we'll look forward to that very much indeed. Erica and Sandra, thanks so much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> but for John and Ollie, it's now time for our pointless final. 
Congratulations, John and Ollie. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, and at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £1,000. There it is. Now, listen, we've joked a lot today, but you have actually done very well. There's been some good answering along the way. What would you like to see come up in this last round? S certainly sport, sport isn't it? 90s yeah. obscure football players would be a good one. OK, um, that'd be but great. Anything, really. You've got a trophy, so we're, we're, we're very happy well, with happy. that. Well, yeah, don't forget, you've got that trophy, but you can choose from four categories for your last round, and here they are. We have got Bowie albums, goon films, chick lit, sporting awards. It's got to be sporting awards, isn't it? It's got to be sporting awards. It's got to be, isn't it? OK. Yes, happy with that? Sporting yeah, awards, there we are. Sporting awards it is. OK, guys, you've come a long way since uh, question one of show one. I'm really, really glad you're in the final. I'm very, very best of luck with this nice category for you, I think. Here's three different options for you. We're looking for anyone who's won the Professional Golf Association of America Player of the Year since 1948. That's all the way through to 2013. Uh, we're looking for anyone who won the Professional Football Association Player of the Year from when it was first given out in 1974 uh, all the way through to uh, the 2012-2013 season or any tennis player who's won the BBC Overseas Sports Personality Award. Very, very best of luck. OK, now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers and all you need to win that jackpot of £1,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Now, remember, the answers you give can come from any of these categories and how you choose to spread them across those categories is entirely down to you. They could all come from the PFA, they could all be PGA, or you could have one from each. It's entirely up to you. Are you ready? Yeah, I think we are, yeah. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are, your time starts now. Old golf player. Old golf player. Uh, Greg Norman. Greg Norman. Go back. Bryce Snedeker. Snedeker's a good one. Adam Scott, can he win a recent? I don't um, know if Adam won it. I think I'm, I'm, I'm going for Snedeker. Snedeker's a shout. Good shout. Like it, like it. PFA Player of the Year, Gareth Bale, Ronaldo. Oh, lower. I think I'm trying to think 90s. Trying to think 90s. Blackburn, 1993. PFA Player of the Year. PFA. PFA. Players, Fashion Fortnite. Yeah. So in the 90s, you've got. Michael Owen, did he win it? Michael. I think. PJ Player of the Year, Jack, mate. Greg Norman. You're going Greg. All right, we go. Two PGA, one PFA. You don't know any tennis? Overseas. There's loads of them. There's loads of them. Federer obviously won it. Yeah. Amelie Marasmo, did she win it? I don't know. I don't know. Um, so we say now, we've got two PJ Player of the Year. Greg Norman. Greg Norman. And a PFA Player, player of the Year. We'll just have to... Nice and old. Bale would quite strong. No, no, we're not. Yeah? Are we? Go on. Oh, fine. Sorry. Done. OK, there's your time up. I now need your three answers. What are you going to give me? We're going to give you two answers for PGA Player of the Year. And they are? Greg Norman. Greg Norman. We're going to... Go on, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to Snedeker as well, are we? Yeah. Please. And Brian Snedeker. Brian Snedeker. Yes. And our PFA Player of the Year... Michael Owen. Out of the ones you've said, yeah. OK, Michael, Michael Owen, Owen, you're going to say. Now, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer, do you think? Greg Norman. Greg Please. Norman. Greg Norman, we will put last. Yeah. Um, Which is your least likely Michael Owen. Michael Owen. to be pointless? Michael Owen, OK. OK, let's pop those up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Michael Owen, Brian Snedeker and Greg Norman. Well, best of luck. Your first answer was Michael Owen, the one you thought was probably least likely... If he won it. ..to oh, be pointless. If he won it at all. It's a bit of a punt. We don't even know if it's correct. Yeah, should have changed that. Now, if it is correct and if it is pointless, you will win £1,000. No arguing with that. What would you do with your share of that, John? Well, Ollie wants a new bicycle, so I'd probably give him the money and then maybe buy him a basket, a bell, and perhaps a nice lock to go with the bike. Add yeah. to it. Be brilliant. Thanks That's very good. decent of you. He's yeah, a good friend. He, he likes cycling. Yeah. Listen, very best of luck. So, Michael Owen, your first answer. We want to find out if Michael Owen has ever won the PFA Player of the Year. It has to be right and it has to be pointless. So, for £1,000, let's find out how many people said Michael Owen. No bad luck. An incorrect answer. So only two more chances to win today's jackpot. Two good answers up on the board, no, though. One of them's wrong. <laughs> come on. Are you sure? Yeah. Come on, Ollie. Come on. It's the wrong name. OK, well, we'll, we'll find out. So we are looking, in this case, for winners of the PGA Player of the Year. Your second answer was Brian Snedeker. Again, it has to be correct and it has to be pointless. So let's find out for £1,000 how many people said Brian Snedeker. No! It's the wrong name. It's all right. One left. Come on. OK, only one more chance. Everything is now riding 
on Greg Norman. Again, it's PGA Player of the Year. Has he ever won it? If it's right, if it is pointless, you leave here with £1,000. Let's find out how many people said Greg Norman. It's right. So, Michael Owen, your first answer was incorrect, as it turns out, as was your second answer, Brian Snedeker. Greg Norman now taking us into single figures. Down we go, still going down. Oh, no! Oh, that is so unfair. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. Good answer. I mean, a great answer. Think how pleased you'd be to score one in normal gameplay, but I'm sorry to say, in this last round, it has to be pointless or nothing. So I'm afraid you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer. So you don't win today's jackpot of £1,000. That will roll over onto the next show, but we have really enjoyed having you on both shows. You've been such good sports, really good fun contestants. Uh, and you do, of course, get to take home a pointless trophy. So very, very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, guys, you've been terrific. It's been a real treat to have you here. Let's go through um, what you got wrong there. Michael Owen uh, never won it. Now, I think you know the problem with Brian Snedeker. Yes, yeah, Brant Snedeker. Yeah, I said that. And if you'd said Brant Snedeker, you'd be leaving right now with exactly what you're leaving with at the moment <laughs> because uh, <laughs> he never won it either. Uh, but especially in the footballers' one, there's going to be a lot of names. You know, the golfers' one as well. 60 seconds is not a lot of time, and these are the names that uh, would have won you the money. For the golfers, uh, you could have had Fred Couples, you could have had Orville Moody, you could have had Podrick Harrington, you could have had Tom Lehman, you could have had Ben Hogan, Corey Pavin, Curtis Strange, you could have had Hal Sutton, Jim Furyk, Marco oh, Mira, Jim. you could have had Paul Azinger, you could have had Tom Kite, so lots of names on that list. Now, the footballers, this is where you're really going to kick yourself. David Platts would have won you the money, John Barnes, you could have had Pat Jennings, uh, Sheringham, you could also have had Roy Keane, you could have had Ruud van Nistelrooy, oh. You could have had Terry McDermott, you could have had... You could have had Clive Allen, David Ginola, Gary Pallister, you could have had. Oh. Uh, you could, oh, I like him going, oh, Les Ferdinand. Oh. You could have had Liam Brady, Mark <laughs> Hughes, you could have had. It's not a lot of time. Uh, you could have had Paul McGrath, Peter Reid, Peter Shilton. And the tennis one, this is one where there's the fewest answers. Uh, just oh. the two, Goran Ivanisevic or Novak Djokovic. Very well done if you've got a pointless answer in any of those categories. Guys, thanks so much for coming along and tough luck in that jackpot round. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Well, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you, John and Ollie, but it's been brilliant having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. John and Ollie. <laughs> now, John and Ollie didn't win our jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,000. <laughs> Join us next time, see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. After last night's discovery, things rapidly deteriorate between Ian and Lucy in EastEnders.